Hi everyone, in some earlier projects, we built an IoT-based AC energy meter using ESP32N by incorporating AC current sensor and AC voltage sensor. We monitored the energy meter data on Blink application, but today's video is all about the DC power energy meter. I designed this custom board for making a compact DC energy meter that can measure voltage up to 36 volt and current up to 30 ampere. Apart from voltage and current, we can measure power consumption as well as kilowatt hour. We need a sensor called INE226 which is a current sensor from Texas Instrument. This sensor is very powerful and precise and has a lot of programmable settings. I incorporated this sensor with ESP8266 chip and observed the energy meter data on Blink dashboard. You can use this project for monitoring a 12 volt lead acid battery. You can also use a solar panel for this project. So let's deep dive and check out how we can build this complete system. Welcome back again. The components used in this project are mostly SMD components. We have updated the bill of materials on our website. It has all the components listed along with the part number. Let us take a look at the current sensor used in this project. We need an energy meter that can measure more voltage and current. The INA226 is the best alternative considering the cost and accuracy. We can measure the voltage up to 36 volt and current up to 30 ampere. The current setting is based on the sound resistance that needs to be selected based on this table. Change the sound resistance according to the current you want for your project. For example, for a 10 milliohm resistor, we can get a current of 8.19 ampere. And if you change this resistor to 3 milliohm, you can get a current up to 27 ampere. These are the register part number that can help you in finding a suitable register. Let's take a look at the design part now. The input voltage source which could be from 7 volt to 36 volt is fed to the 7805 voltage regulator IC. Use a proper heatsink for 7805 in case you are using a voltage above 12 volt. The switch SW1 will turn on off the system. The voltage from 7805 is fed to the 3.3 volt voltage regulator IC ST7333. The 3.3 volt is fed to the ESP8266 and the current sensor module. The ESP8266 circuit has an automatic programmer circuit handled by this transistor Q1 and Q2 and some resistor capacitors. You don't need to press any push buttons while uploading the code. To upload the code, you need to use these header pins and connect an FTDI module. The INA226 sensor is connected to I2C pins of ESP8266. The input of INA226 accepts source voltage up to 36 volt. The output here is connected to the load along with the VBUS pin which measures load voltage and current. The extra I2C pin is provided here so that you can connect a 0.96 inches I2C OLED display. To draw this schematic, I used EasyEDS software. Then I converted the schematic to a custom PCB. All the components are perfectly placed and are easy to assemble at home. This is the 3D view of this project. I have added the GOVA file for this in the website article. You can download it from there. It is time to order the PCB. So I visited All PCB, which is the official sponsor of this video as well. You can get your trial for PCB for only $1 here. It is very cheap compared to all other PCB manufacturers. I uploaded the GOVA file and filled in the details like material type, dimensions, quantities, thickness, solder mass color, and other required parameters. Then I clicked on a quote now. Here you see the price is only $1. Now I selected my country of shipment and placed the order. Now up to 5 days I received the PCB. Look at this PCB quality. It is very premium and has a perfect design for my project. 
If you want to order the PCV8 dollar, check the first link in the description. Now it is time to assemble the components on the PCB. First, I collected all my ordered components one by one. Then I collected all the necessary resistors and capacitors from my handbook. All the resistors, capacitors and LEDs are of 0805 package which are easy to solder. For soldering, I am using my hot air gun. I set the temperature around 360 degrees Celsius. For visualization and help, I use the Andon Star microscope. Using my microscope, I place solder paste on the PCB pad. Then I placed all the components one by one. First, I soldered all the assembly components like resistors, capacitors, transistors, LED and push buttons. After soldering all these, I soldered ESP8266 raw chip. The final stage would be soldering all the through hole components like switch, terminal block, male female heaters and INA226 sensor. Now our hardware is ready and it looks awesome. Everything is soldered properly and it looks neat and clean. However, while testing I found ESP8266 was entering into WDT reset mode. So I soldered two large value capacitors for voltage stability. The issue was fixed. I have also updated the design and GOVA file. The latest design has no issues at all. Before moving to the programming part, let's set up the blink app. We will monitor the energy meter data on Blink dashboard. Create a new template and name it DC Energy Meter. We need to set up the data streams. Therefore, create 5 data streams source fillets, load voltage, current, power and KWH. Now go to the dashboard section and set up the dashboard. For source voltage, load voltage and current, I used the GOS widget. For power and KWEH, I used a label display. Link all the widgets with data streams and click on save. Go to the home and click on add device. Name the device DC energy meter and click on create. The device is successfully created and you will get the device ID and authentication token. This parameter will be used in the code. In the coding part, we have used INA226 library and Blink ESP8266 library. From these lines, change the Wi-Fi SSID, password, Blink authentication token and template ID. We initialized all the energy meter parameters as 0 initially. Follow the comments and these advanced setting options for proper setup and code expandability. This is the most important line now. Here, you need to assign the shunt resistance value and current value. The shunt resistance now is here 0 0.1 ohm and the maximum current it can measure is 1.3 ampere. In case the value is set to 5 milli ohm, the current it can measure is 10 ampere. Refer to the stable and change resistance accordingly. This line is also very important. This is the calibration factor which dependent upon the practical observation. 
read this comment and also follow the website article for more details. Under the loop section, we are reading the value of source voltage, load voltage, current, power and KWH. We are printing these values in serial monitor. Using the blink virtual write function, we are sending these parameters to blink app. To upload the code to the ESP8266 port, connect a USB to TTL converter module to the PROG pin. From the list, select generic ESP8266 port and the COM port. Then click on the upload button to upload the code. After successful code uploading, open the serial monitor. The serial monitor will show all the values 0 as no source and no load is connected to the board. In order to test the working, we need to connect a DC source to the board. The minimum voltage it requires is 7 volt and the maximum it can withstand is 36 volt. You can either use a solar panel or a 12 volt battery. In the load part, you can connect any load like a 12 volt LED light or a DC motor. For the demo, I used a DC motor. If you check your serial monitor, you will observe the values of the source voltage, load voltage, current power and KWH. Go to your Blink dashboard. You will be able to observe the values online as well. You may connect multiple loads and increase the power to observe the changes in trading. If you have set up the mobile blink dashboard, you may observe your energy meter readings here. The same IoT DC energy meter can also be used in solar power monitoring system. For that, connect the solar panel to the input source and observe the reading in blink app. It is perfect, right? Everything is measured correctly. The complete project details including design, schematic, PCB, cover files, codes and calculations have been uploaded in the How to Electronics website article. That is all from the video part today. If you love this project, do hit the like button and comment down for support. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.